Hi, um, I'm Velvet, and I'm going to show you how to get this uh, sort of effect on your hairs um, to make it pop and just, like, take it to the next level and make it look really, really clean. Um, so this is called Ambient Occlusion. It's basically shadows where the hair is sitting on top of each other. You see, like, there's shadows in here, shadows, like, here, but this is what it looks like without shadows. So this is what hair normally looks like if you don't know how to do this, um, but... I'm going to show you how to do it. So first you have to start in Blender. Um, you have to have a hair already made. I will link a tutorial on how to make and UV map hair by my really good friend Kree. She's very, very amazing. She makes amazing stuff. I will link her down in the description so you can see exactly how to make this hair. Um, and yeah, so I'm just going to get right into how to get to the ambient occlusion part. So. What this hair consists of is all of this and then two UV maps. I'm going to delete this UV map so it's gone. Um, I'm going to show you how to mark a seam. So what a seam is, is you see how here, I'm going to show you just one piece. Oops. There's this. So this hair piece is flat. This is a flat rendition of what this hair piece looks like on a texture so what that is is here is the end at the edge of the island there is this red line and what that what this is is this unwrapped so imagine i cut this here and then flatten it out that's exactly what this is so i'm going to show you how to just do this whole thing so this is UV map to this texture, but if I use this texture to make the ambient occlusion, because these pieces are on top of each other, it's not going to look good. Because you can essentially only get the top UV map texture like to be ambient, um, or to like, I'm trying to explain it the best way I can, but it's a pretty big no-no in 3D modeling to have overlapping textures because you're not going to be able to texture the part that's underneath. You're only going to be able to texture the top island. So how I work around this to use both normal textures where things are overlaid and an ambient occlusion is I will make a separate UV map that is under object data properties and it's under UV maps. You see it right under vertex groups and shape keys. There's UV maps. So one thing to note is you always want your first UV map to na be named UV map with this exact capitalization. Because if you join this hair with a body and the body's top UV map is UV map and this one's hair, it's going to break and you're going to lose either one of the UV sets. So you always want this to be named UV map. This one is going to be named AO because I'm going to bake my ambient occlusion on it. So to make this AO, you're going to want to switch over to this you just switch between them by clicking the camera icon. Um, but on the AO UV map, I'm going to hit U to unwrap. And you'll see if you forgot any hair pieces by <laughs> this. Uh, here, I'll show you what this looks like. So I'm just going to clear my seams and then unwrap this like normal. Oh, well, I don't think I cleared my seams. Yeah. So you'll see this sort of thing. It's This is not good. Uh, you see this looks messy it doesn't look like the other ones like this you will see if you mess up messed up somewhere so basically you're just going to want to hit unwrap and you'll get something like this it will like ai is not very amazing at knowing what's important and what's not so you can edit this further if you find that one of your really big front hair pieces is really tiny on your uv map you're gonna want to make that bigger and adjust everything else according so actually i had an issue with this specific piece it's right here i had an issue with it Actually, I don't think it's right there. I'm trying to find... Yeah, it's right here. So I had an issue in, in Substance Painter with this specific piece, and I'm not sure why. So I'm just going to move this specific piece here. And I feel like this piece also had an issue, so I'm just going to move it to be safe. Um, I'm just going to fit it right in between here. So what you're going to do to get this into Substance Painter... Because Substance Painter, there's no way to switch UV maps... So what I do is I just duplicate my hair and delete the first UV map. So now I only have AO and this is what it should look like. It should take the hair textures really poorly. It doesn't look good. This is not what it's going to look like. 
Um, so then I just export this as an FVX, selected objects only, hair for AO is what I name it usually, and then I just delete it after. But there's my hair for AO, and then I'm going to go to Substance Painter. There it is already done, and you can see the issue I had here. But I'm going to hit New, I'm going to go to File, Select, and then I'm going to click my hair for AO. So this is my hair with this ambient, this UV map specifically made for my ambient occlusion. And then you can get to bake your mesh maps under edit and bake mesh maps, or you can hit control shift B and you're going to want to change your output size to 4k. You can compress this in unity later, but you want it to be high for now, just so it looks good because all the pieces are kind of small on the texture. So you want them, you want the file size to be larger. So my ambient occlusion is here. I deselect, I, I, I deselected everything else because this is the only thing I want to bake. If you're going to be texturing something fully in Substance Painter, you want to bake all of these, but since I'm only baking an ambient occlusion map and I'm only going to be using an ambient occlusion map, this is all I'm baking. So bake selected textures and there we go. I see I have a little issue here, but I'm not going to be worried about that right now because everything else looks good and I can honestly find it later and just erase that issue. I'm not sure why I have that issue. Let me try to find it. Where is that? Oh, it's this piece. This piece, I showed an example of what your UV map shouldn't look like, and then I didn't fix it. But this is what will happen if you don't <laughs> mark your seams. So anyways, I'm just going to go to File, and then Export, and then Hair. I'm going to deselect everything except for Mixed AO, and Export. So this goes to my folder with all of my textures. So I'm just going to hide this one. I keep making folders because I keep having to re-record this, but I'm going to drag in my hair for AO. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm wrong because I'm dragging in this one with only one. So you're going to want the hair with two UV maps. I'm just going to export that. I'm just going to export it over. Yeah, there's the first recording of this because I keep messing up. Drag this into Unity, and I will note that this does only work with Poyomi. I'm not aware of any other shader that allows you to have multiple UV maps. Pretty sure they exist, but for now, this is just the way I know it. Everybody uses Poyomi for their sale avatars. I'm not sure how to do it in like booth shaders. So I'm just going to give you an example of how I do it personally. So I'm going to make my hair material and I'm going to drag it onto my, my mesh and I'm going to change it to Poyomi. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to turn this off, put on my light gray. This is what my hair looks like without my ambient occlusion. It's pretty, pretty basic. Um, I usually put a normal map on here, shading, do a matte cap. Okay, we're getting somewhere, but it's still flat. So I'm going to drag in my ambient occlusion. So you can find that in your substance export folder. Um, people are usually more organized than I am, so I'm not going to tell you where I keep mine. <laughs> um, so how I add this to the second UV map is under decals. There is a ambient occlusion thing in Poyomi, but I found that it only works or it works well when you're using realistic shading but i personally use flat shading so i'm not gonna put it here i use flat shading and this is what works for me so i put it into decal number one and it looks really weird this is not <laughs> what it's supposed to look like obviously so what you're gonna do is drop down your decal change the uv to the second uv map and there it is there's your there's your ambient occlusion, but we're not done. So under blending, you're going to want to change it from replace to multiply. And that allows some of the original hair texture to show through. And only the black pieces or like only the darkest colors are remaining on this texture. So my alpha, you can turn this down on lighter hair and turn it up on darker hair. See if I go in and I change it's this dark texture, you're not really going to be able to see it. But once you take it away, 
you can really, really see the difference there. Um, one thing I've noticed when I take this directly into Photoshop to edit, like, if you have colored hair, you're going to want to make the shadows a darker version of the color. So if I if my hair was light pink, I would want to make it like a hot pink. But I've noticed that it doesn't really work with a grayscale image. I don't know how to get around this because I'm not very good at Photoshop. But what I do to work around that is I just make a new 4K canvas. And then I will drag this in on top. So it's a new layer. The whole canvas is in grayscale. And I just drop my hot pink in there. And change that to screen. And it it makes all the black and it makes it this hot pink color. So say my hair was hot pink. I'm going to just AO pink. I'm actually going to drag in a pink hair texture so I can show you what I mean. There we go. I will. That's fine. So yeah, if I have a pink hair texture with a black ambient occlusion map, it just kind of looks dull. So I don't know if I dragged it in. Wait, I did not drag it in. So my pink ambient occlusion map is going to go back into the decals. And you see how it just looks more bright? It looks brighter. Definitely, this is just a stylistic choice. You can make it any color you want. But one thing that is really really nice about decals is if you have a hair hue shift you can hue shift the decal as well so if you have a hair hue shift and you find that like your your decal looks weird it's because you have to you have to hue shift it with the hair so I'm just gonna show you what I mean if my hair is green I'm gonna want my I'm not gonna want my ambient occlusion to be pink you're gonna want to hue shift it with the hair looks fantastic but that is how I do things. Um, there are definitely ways to bake your ambient inclusion in Blender if you want to look into that, if you don't have Substance Painter. But this is how I do it, and I use Substance Painter. So, have fun. Um, make amazing hair. Do whatever you want. Use this knowledge for something totally wacky. Do literally anything. Just, I hope you guys have fun and learn something new today.